Thanks for joining me. I'm Megan. Today is a fun practice that if you imagine that somatics and yoga went on a date together and the discussion was how can we engage strength and be present in our core, this is that practice. So I'm calling it sweet, the somatics, and spicy core. And know that my definition of core is Anything that stabilizes the spine. So we sometimes think of just the six-pack abs, that rectus abdominis. We might think of our obliques. It includes your backside. Everything stabilizing your spine. So let's get started. Um, if you have a, what we call this a slow-mo or an overball, a soft ball that you can, uh, it's kind of pliable here, right? That you can play with, use that. Uh, otherwise, a block will work, but the ball is definitely better. So if you have your slow-mo, grab that. We're gonna come down onto the ground. Coming into constructive rest position, just close enough to pet Bodhi, get a few Bodhi pets. Knees are bent, feet on the ground. We wanna find the uh, arch and curl position because that's gonna help us to ex access our lower abdominal muscles, our uh, deeper core muscles. So placing your hands on your abdomen, just begin to breathe softly to your belly. Breathing in, the abdomen rises. Breathing out, it softens. And not only your abdomen softens, the whole back body feels the support of the ground as you're breathing out. Take five more rounds of breath, just letting yourself settle. And visualize all the parts of your torso that encompass this core, the support system for your spinal column. Maybe the parts that are touching the ground, the parts that are moving with your breath, your rib cage, your lower abdominal area. And then next time you breathe in, allow the abdomen to rise, the tailbone to press into the ground and create that arch in the low back. So I'll move my arms out of the way, but you can keep your hands on your belly. As you breathe out, gently press low back, lower ribs into the ground and slightly lift the tailbone. So that's the movement, but because we're doing core, on the exhalation, I'm gonna encourage you to think of drawing in the space from your two hips, from your pubis bone to your navel center. It's like a cinch sack and draw that space in and then inhale, release it. Let the abdomen stretch. So we're working with our transversus abdominis, these deeper layer muscles in the lower abdomen, waking those up right away. And these are very intuitive muscles. They like to keep us upright. You can feel the ground, inhaling into the arch, stretch that front area. Think of it a corset of muscles across your front. Exhale, purposely draw in. So think of drawing all of the skin on your navel, or in and around your navel center towards the front of your spine. The other thing we can find here, if you're familiar with it, is pelvic floor. So now as you inhale, let your legs drop open. You'll feel a stretch in the inner thighs as you feel the abdomen stretch. As you breathe out, not only press low back, low ribs in and draw the navel center in, but hug your inner thighs. Think of pulling the pelvic floor muscles up and in towards the navel center. Inhale, pelvic floor stretches. So it expands just like the abdomen. So they're twins, whatever the abdomen does, the pelvic floor does. Exhale, pelvic floor and abdominal muscles engage. They squeeze in. And you don't have to force it in a way that's uncomfortable, but see if you can feel. So with the pelvic floor, the key is if you can feel them stretch, you know they're moving. Or if you can feel them contract, you know they're moving. So if you feel one or the other of the movements, the expansion or the contraction, you know they're moving. And pausing to just feel the way that the pelvic floor and the TAs, transverse abdominis, work together. Take a few more here. We wanna lengthen the low back on the exhale, contract the low back on the inhale. So that's the other thing, we're working with the back muscles. You're gonna sense how the back muscles are shortening and contracting on the inhalation. Feel it from there. Last few. And then come back to that center position. We're gonna add on to this. So you're gonna take your hands behind your head, clasp your hands in a little bit of a basket, and one of the things that I watch for when I do this is that I'm not tilting the head. You're gonna keep the front of the throat open and the base of the skull reaching towards the back of the room. So as opposed to lifting head like this, that's lifting head, 
we're lifting shoulder blades. And we may not come up as high, but give that a try. Feel the difference between changing the shape of your neck versus keeping your neck long, throat open, and lifting shoulder blades. That's what we want to feel in this next movement. So take a moment in the breath there. Now as you breathe in, you're not only going to press the tailbone down and arch the lower back, you're going to press the arm bones into the ground and feel how your whole back arches. The upper back is now engaged as well as the low back. As you breathe out, gently lift that tailbone or press low back, low ribs down and lift shoulder blades. So you're rolling into the center of the navel with tailbone and shoulders. Think your two girdles, your pelvic girdle and your shoulder girdle coming towards the center of your body. And then you can inhale, come back down, press shoulder blades into the ground, big arch in the back, front side stretches. Exhale, lift up. And if you want to squeeze your arms towards your ears as you lift up, you can. Just watch that we're not tilting the head. Inhale, arch. Exhale, crown of the head reaches back. Lift up. If this is going well, see if you can add the pelvic floor. So on the inhalation, let the legs drop open. So you're going to have this feeling of expansion through the inner thighs, the whole front body, even the fronts of the arms now. As you exhale, squeeze to the midline of the body, inner thighs, draw the navel center in. Inhale into the arch and exhale, curl. So do a couple in movement. And what you're finding is that sensation of on the inhalation, the back body is, is, is contracted and the front body is expanded. On the exhalation, front body is contracted. You're shortening the space from the pubis all the way to the collarbones. All those muscles are active. You might even feel the muscles in your ribs, right? Notice which side of your body, front or back, is contracted and which side is lengthening. Sometimes a smaller, lower motion will actually get you more connected to these muscles, contracting and expanding. The other way we can attach more to the muscles is to stop. So next inhalation, take a pause there. Press the elbows into the ground and the shoulder blades, arch the back, let the knees fall open. You might even press into the pinky toe side of the feet. Feel all the space in the front body. Breathe into that space in the front body. Notice how you might sense more of the pelvic floor stretching in this position. The thigh position is going to Increase your chance of stretching the pelvic floor along with the front body. But also notice how the back body, body muscles are engaged, like shortened. Take a few more breaths into this one. And then just release for a moment. And we'll do a hold on the other end of it. So inhale into your arch. Exhale, curl, hug the inner thighs. Draw your pelvic floor up. You might even press into the big toe side of the feet. To help get that pelvic floor going, draw in through your abdominal wall. You don't have to lift your head very high. If you want to hug your elbows, you can. But think this whole front strip, not just that center rectus abdominis, but feel your rib cage as well. Hold there. Breathe in and out. Gently pressing low back, low ribs into the ground and lifting the tailbone is going to help you to feel the contraction in the front body. And that'll be important as we're moving forward too. A few more breaths. Make sure you can breathe here because we're contracting through the front, lengthening through the back. Uh, let it all go wherever your body wants to be. Pause for a moment and feel the heat. Feel the heat that you're creating through these somewhat gentle somatic movements, but more importantly, they're eye-opening somatic movements. They're helping you to connect to the muscles, specifically the Lower abdominal, those transversus abdominis and pelvic floor, those deep core muscles. And then we're going to move along with this one. So this is where you're either going to want the ball or a block. If you've got the only got the block, use that. I like the ball. It's a little more playful and intuitive. But you're, whichever one you got, you're going to put it underneath your widest part of your bum. Come back into constructive rest. Let yourself settle. I'll show it with both if you'd like. Maybe just take a little bit of movement if you've got the ball. So we're going to do that same arch and curl movement, but we're going to add an extension of the leg and a, and a flexion of the leg. 
So you're gonna inhale into your arch. I actually find it's better usually to take your arms out to your sides because you wanna keep the shoulders stabilized. Inhale into your arch just as you were before. Think of lifting up your rib cage, like you're expanding your diaphragm upward. As you exhale, curl. Do just a few here first. And again, you might be on the block. Make sure it's in the right spot. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl. So you might notice on the curl now, you can get even longer through your low back. Inhale into the arch. You're gonna feel more of that arch of the spine because we've got the ball or the block underneath us. Exhale, bigger curl. So increasing the shape, the both the curl and the arch in the shape of the spine. Just take me a few more. Notice what's grounded, land into those areas that are touching the ground, including the ball or the block. And next time you take an exhalation, you're gonna draw the left leg into your body as close and tight as you can. Draw the foot towards the shin, the thigh towards your ribs. So this is the flexion of the spine and the, or excuse me, flexion of the leg and the spine is getting long. We're, get, we're exhaling, so we're coming into that curl position. Now as you inhale, arch the back, extend the leg out long, see if you can let it hover. So right now I'm arched, but in this arch position, I cannot access these prominent supportive muscles of the abdo abdominal area. So what I wanna do is curl again, keep the curl, draw the navel center in, keep the leg expanded, and then just play. Just play with moving your leg a little bit. And imagine this lovely strong leg being held up by these core muscles in the front of the body. Whether you feel it more in your lower abdominal area, it might feel pelvic floor, upper chest and ribs, so gently pressing shoulder blades into the ground. Just play with it. And then exhalation, around the back again, draw the leg in, inhale, place the foot on the ground. Pause for a moment to notice the two sides. And let's do the other side. Inhale into the arch. Exhale, curl, and draw the right leg in. Hug it in as tight as you can. This is great for the psoas, by the way, too. Inhale, extend the leg and let your back arch, but notice there might even be a pinching in the backside. We don't want that. We wanna exhale, curl the spine. Draw, imagine drawing the hips towards one another and the pu pubic bone and the navel center. And then once you've got that, just play with moving that right leg around. You can bounce it up and down. You can go side to side. You can make circles but feel yourself supporting the weight of the right leg from your core. Shoulders are soft. You can move your head side to side, keeping the neck relaxed. You should be able to put a smile on your face. Next exhalation, round the spine, draw the leg in and set it down. We're gonna do two more of those on each side. You may find you need to adjust your ball or block in between. Inhale into the arch. Exhale, draw the leg in. Inhale, extend the leg, arch the back. Exhale, curl the back, keep the leg extended. And play with a little bit of movement. And I find that the bigger pulsations, I actually don't feel as much in my core as I just do these little tiny bounces. See yourself supporting the weight of the leg from your abdominal muscles, through your rib cage. Upper body soft and relaxed. Next breath out. Exhale into the curl. Draw the leg in. Inhale, foot to the ground. Once again with the right leg. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl. Draw the leg in. Inhale into the extension. Let the back arch. Exhale, curl. Think of lifting your tailbone or lengthening the low back. Draw your navel center in. Keep that. You might have to bring your breath up more into your chest so it, we can't really breathe to the abdomen. That belly breath doesn't work when we're contracting it. So breathe through your chest. And just bounce it around a little bit. This is the wakeful part. This is the sweet part of this practice. Next breath out, draw it in. Next breath in, drop the foot to the floor. One last round here, familiarizing yourself, and I'll give you... Another option here too, inhale, arch. Exhale, left leg comes in on the curl. If you wanna to add to that, you could take your hands back behind your head like we did. Squeeze in, take a few breaths in that curl. So 
So notice how contracted your front body is. And we're, we're able to find that because of the position of the body, but we wanna see if we can recreate this front body contraction even when the leg is extended and the arms are down. But feel that in your brain. Then inhale, elbows down, arch the back, extend. As you exhale, curl the back, and maybe you wanna lift up. Remember, we're not talking the chest towards the chest. Keep the throat long. Add a little bit more, you'll feel more of the engagement through the pectoral area. Hold if you want, you can move your leg or just be still. Check to see you're still breathing. You gotta find your breath somewhere in that front body. Next exhalation, you can land, draw the leg in, inhale it down. Sometimes that ball gets away. Resituate yourself, last one for the right leg. Find your comfortable space for your constructive rest. Inhale, arch, press the arms into the ground, arch your back. Exhale, curl your back, draw the leg in, and if you want to add the head. So what I think of is instead of lifting from the head, I think of lifting from my sternum, your collarbones. Hold that for a few breaths. Lengthen the crown of your head if you can. So where can you really connect with that shortness and strength of the front body? And then we'll see if we can recreate that. Next inhalation, press elbows down, arch the back, extend your leg. As you exhale, keep the leg extended, but our, curl the back and you can lift your head up possibly and just play with moving the leg. Can you recreate that feeling of all those front body muscles strong and engaged? Breathing. So there's a subtlety to getting these to come on. We're not dripping with sweat, or maybe you are, let me know. But we're, we're finding them first. The next part might have you dripping with sweat. With sweat. But first we wanna make sure they're firing. You might even feel your pelvic floor. And then exhale, draw the leg in. Inhale, release. Okay, so while we have that ball underneath you, so the, the, the block may not work as well for this one, but give it a go. We're gonna go into more of what I call the intuitive core, and I see I'm sliding off my mat here, so I'm gonna move this way <laughs> for the, the intuitive core. So where we really don't have to think about it. So with the feet on the floor, just readjust the ball. You can try it, like I said, with the block, but it doesn't work quite as well. And then lift your legs up off the floor, take your arms to your sides, and just start to move around side to side. So be playful. I like to imagine that that ball is like, uh, and if you're falling off like I just did, you may have too much air in the ball, so adjust it. But I like to imagine it's like a raft, and you're just floating your pelvis on that raft. And as you're moving around, see how you can feel the way your brain is just trying to keep you from tipping over, right? And in order to do that, it's gonna turn on those deep core muscles. It's trying to anticipate your movement. It's trying to keep you safe. But in keeping you safe, it's intuitively gonna turn some of those deep stabilizers on in your body. Let's move around a bit. Go side to side, you can also go front to back. And then take your feet down and pause for a moment. Be still. Resituate that ball. I definitely have too much air in mine, but I'm going to go for it anyhow. Let your sacrum relax. Let your low back be long. So that's the key to engaging the front body muscles is low back is long. And we'll do one more round of that, that intuitive playful core. So take your feet up and maybe this time you want to extend your legs, get a little stretch through your hamstrings and then rock. And just feel the way these torso muscles are trying to keep you balanced. And not even trying, they're gifting you. They're gifting you this balance by engaging to keep you at your center. And then if that's going well, you can do legs. You could also do the legs bent and lift your arms up, but see if you can get your arms off the ground and slightly lift up through your shoulder blades, not tucking the head so much because you're actually engaging the muscles in the front of your throat to lengthen the head. <laughs> and if I tip over here, I tip over. You may tip over too, that's okay. Be playful and feel the way your body is centering you. And it's hard to talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> you can go as far as you want. 
ah, and then tip over. Go ahead and tip over to your left side. If you went to your right, just switch. We're going to go into the next pose, and it's a sideline pose. So come on to your left side. You can use your left arm as a pillow. Just stack your knees however they want to be. So this next one, we're going to work more with the side body muscles, particularly the obliques, but you're going to wrap your right hand around and take your hand so that your fingers are just above your right ear. And it really helps this way, this one, just like we breathe, we were breathing to the belly to get the abdominal muscles to contract. If we can really visualize our ribs, particularly your right rib. So actually, before you wrap your hand, place your hand on your right ribs. Notice how as you breathe in, your right ribs expand and lift up. And imagine your right ribs, ribs <laughs> lifting the left ribs up off the ground. As you breathe out, let the ribs come back down. So let your breath expand the right side, contract the left side, and then come back down. Find that first, and then go ahead and wrap that right hand around so fingers are just above the ear, elbow points up towards the sky. Now as you inhale, draw your elbow away from the hip or think of your armpit and your hip stretching, lift your left side off the ground. So there's a contraction on the left side. As you exhale, shorten the right side, draw your right armpit towards your left hip. So you're gonna feel this contraction right there through that right side, left side lengthens. So it's another arch and curl, inhale, arching and curling from the side. So lateral bend, exhaling, coming up, Inhaling, lift the right rib cage, contract the left rib cage. Exhale, contract the right, lift or press into the left. Feel the left pressing into the ground. If you feel like you're relying too much on your arm, you could just let your arm come overhead too, or do your reach with your hand here. This is another way I teach it. If I if I see somebody's head coming too far forward or they're holding tension in their neck or their shoulders, it can be an inhale extension. And exhale, reach. Inhale, pet the dog. And exhale, reach. So just the way to, the best way I think to picture it in your mind's eye is feel the space from your armpit to your hip. Shorten the right side as you breathe out. Lengthen the right side as you breathe in. Or look at it from the left side. You're lengthening the left side as you breathe out and shortening the left side as you breathe in. Take a few more rounds. Watch that head's not coming forward. I always catch myself. You gotta take your head back. So you're also getting into the muscles in the side of the neck. Really good for the neck. And relax, come down. Pause for a moment. Feel any sense of heat in your body? That sweet heat, once again. This time we're gonna go from the sweet heat to the spicy heat. So we're gonna come on on, onto our left forearm, placing the elbow right about underneath the shoulder, hand in front of you in a 90 degree angle. And then what you wanna do is keep your knees stuck, but slide your thigh bones back so that you have a straight line in the front of your body. So your thighs are in line with your belly and your chest. Find that first. You can place your right hand at your hip. It's going to be basically the same movement to the, to the breath as we just did, but a little more work now. So now as you inhale, think of lifting up the right rib cage or filling the right rib cage, but lift your left hip off the ground. As you exhale, not only land, so you can come down because gravity is going to help you, but imagine drawing the right armpit towards the right hip. So shorten and lengthen the left side. Inhale, left side shortens, it's strong. Right side lifts, breathe into your right lung. Exhale, land. So that same arch and curl, but it's, it's a side bend arch and curl. One side is arching of your body as the other is curling. So on the inhalation, the right side is lengthening, left side shortening. Exhale, left side lengthens, right side shortens. Just feel that relationship between the side muscles. This is another one. We can feel the spiciness perhaps a little bit. And of course, we're using the strength of our arm. You have to press your arm into the ground. But you'll feel the spicy, spiciness by moving, but you can also take the next one into a hold. See if you can stay there. Think of 
lifting that left hip and side body off the ground. So really strong through that bottom left side. But you can also breathe into your right rib. Ribs. Uh, use that to help sustain yourself. Take the head back. A few more breaths. Spice it up. You might feel this one tomorrow. Actually, probably not for two days. <laughs> Exhale, release down. All right, what's going to feel good is when we switch, we're going to stretch that left side out after that hold. So go ahead and roll over onto your right side. We'll switch sides. You can use your arm as a pillow, stack your knees. <sighs> Pause for a moment. Feel the, the sweet heat. Maybe slightly spicy now. Notice if your heart is beating a little faster. And then feel the left rib cage. You can even place your hand there as you breathe in. Sense the upward and outward expansion of the left ribs. Breathe out, let them soften. But then eventually you want to bring that softening on the exhale into more of an active contraction. So imagine drawing your left hip towards your left armpit on the exhale or pressing right ribs into the ground. Inhale, lift right ribs, stretch the left ribs. So the way we create force or recruit muscles is either by pressing into the ground, in which in this case on the exhale, you could press the right ribs down or by pulling away from the ground. On the inhale, lift the right ribs, lift the left ribs. Press the left ribs down as you exhale. And then once we find that, first option for the hand is wrap the hand around, elbow pointing straight up towards the sky. Take the skull back in line with your sacrum. And inhale, draw the armpit and the elbow away from the hip, the hip and the hip in the opposite direction. Exhale, contract that side body. So feel the way your spine is going through these lovely little side bends. And the way that your muscles are coordinating that movement, which side is long, and sometimes a long side is active. Call that eccentric contraction, that's good. So you might have that left side long here, lifting the right side. Exhale, shorten, left side, lengthen, right side. Close your eyes, really familiarize yourself with the muscles. And if you find that you're, you're using too much of your arm, because we really wanna feel the side body or if your neck isn't comfortable, if you don't have to support your head, that's the other way to look at it. Take your arm and reach on the inhale as you lift your rib cage. Exhale, reach your hand towards your toes. Watch you keep your head back. Inhaling, lengthening the left side, arching the right side, or feel the right side contract. Exhale, press the right ribs down, lengthen the right side, shorten the left side. So feel the hip and the shoulder come away from each other on the left side as you breathe in. Imagine the hip and shoulder kissing each other on the exhale. Get a nice little swimming dance here. Last one. Through the sweetness of the movement, the strength of your torso, and pause. And we'll make it a little spicier coming up onto your right arm. So we want to Stack the shoulder right over the elbow. Draw your thigh bones back. So you've got, if you take a ruler down the front of your body, that ruler would be straight. You can take, I think it's helpful to take your hand to your hip. Imagine your arm and your hand like a handle. And then when you're ready, as you breathe in, fill the left rib cage up, fill the left lung, lift the right side body. As you breathe out, Gently press the right side body into the ground and actively bring the left armpit towards the left hip and vice versa. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, come down. It's a good bit of mobility here too in this side bend. But the important part is you're stabilizing the side bend with the muscles and you want to feel that. Watch the head's not coming forward again. So best, best line of defense for the neck is to keep the neck long and the base of the skull in line with the sacrum. Let your breath help you to lift up. And you can also push your arm down a little bit into the ground as you're lifting up and coming back down. 
last one and the last time we took a hold. So see if you want to take that hold. Stabilize. Keep lifting, lifting your left side on inhale. Fill the left lung up. Exhale, imagine contracting the right side. Last few breaths, let that heat build. And come down. We're going to rest on our abdomen this time. Come all the way down onto your belly. You can cross opposite hand to elbow if you want. Let your forehead rest. Feel free to bend the knees and rock the legs side to side. Feel the thighs rolling into the ground. So we got another one that we're going to do a little sweet and spicy. And this is for the back line of the body, so our stabilizers along our spine itself. You're going to take your right arm down to your side, so I'll show it with left, but with the palm facing up. We want the right arm to completely relax. Shake out your hips, let the thigh bones rest. So we really want to focus on engaging the middle of the back and the upper back. So you're going to place your right cheek on your left hand, so you're looking out at your left elbow. Notice the natural desire on the inhalation to let your body float forward and upward. So if you breathe into your chest right now, you're going to feel the inhalation as it presses into the ground, that little bit of running into the ground, that force. Breathing out, it feels like you're sinking into the ground. So when you're ready, on your next inhalation, reach the crown of the head forward. So again, I'm not lifting or changing the shape of my neck. Crown of the head's coming forward, but I'm going to lift my elbow and my head. But more importantly, think of lifting collarbones and chest. And exhale. Come back down. So let's do a couple of these. What we're focusing on here is not only using the back line of the muscles, but more back line muscles, but specifically the left side. So can you keep your right arm quiet and relaxed? And notice, is your left upper body around your shoulder blade helping you to lift? And also sense if anything's going on below the belt. So when we do this movement on its own, it's called the crossbody movement. And lifting the left shoulder should engage the right butt cheek. So you may feel that happening. If not, I've got other videos you can look at to do that. But the other thought is, can you let everything below the belt just relax? So if you tend to hold tension in your low back, raise your hand, that's probably at least a third of you. Let the low back be long, and the way you can do that is take an exhalation, draw the tailbone down, lift the front of the abdomen just a little bit, just like we did when we were flipped the other way, right? We wanna keep the low back long, so almost that little curl. And use those upper back stabilizers in the center of the spine to lift. Low back stays long. So you can actually engage your transverse abdominis, the front of the belly, right? The pelvic floor. And then add these upper back muscles, inhaling up. And for me, I know I can go much further. So if I let that lumbar area arch, this is what I got without feeling like I'm cramping or pushing into my low back. But if you lengthen the tailbone down just a little bit, draw the navel center up and in. See if you can go a little bit higher on that inhalation and really sense the way you're using your mid-back and upper back muscles, specifically on the left side. Let your breath help you do the work. The other thing you can do is you can gently turn your head to the right. Exhale down onto the left cheek. Sometimes it just feels good for the neck. This is another release. And go back and forth with the head, just sliding your forehead across your hand. If you lose that sense of pressing the front of the pelvis into the ground, you can stop, find it again. Just do a few more. Feel your strong back. Strong upper back, soft lower back, if that's agreeable for you, or if you can find it. So we try to let the glutes relax a little bit. Finish your last one, making sure when you exhale, everything is releasing. And come back down. I'm going to stay facing this way, so you're going to be looking at the back of my head, but we're going to switch hands. 
Let the left arm come down to your side, shake it out. Place your left cheek on your right hand. Just pause there for a moment. So part of this too is keeping that left shoulder quiet, focusing on the right. Feel that triangle shape from your right hand through the elbow and then back through the upper shoulder blade. You wanna really sense that right shoulder blade. And then next breath in, feel like you're reaching long through the spine. So the spine is reaching forward, but you're lifting upward from the chest, the collarbones. Breathing out, we come back down. Release completely. And see what happens naturally. Are you feeling that compression in the low back? Is any, any musculature firing in your buttocks or your hips, your thighs? Can you feel your right shoulder blade and can you keep your left side relaxed? So before we go into the more yogic full body back bend, we want to check to see what's working and what's not working, specifically right side versus left side, upper back versus lower back. And if you find there's too much compression in the lower back, then on the exhalation, draw the tailbone down or think of slightly drawing your navel center in, just like we did when we were on our backside. And keep that. Inhale and lift up again. And notice how much further I can go comfortably. Exhaling down. So when we can feel that TAs, the transverse abdominis and the pelvic floor support turning on, that gives a, the back, the lumbar area, the support it needs to go a little bit higher and longer without putting the pressure on it. So play around with that. Inhaling up and forward. Exhaling down. See if you can keep that left shoulder relaxed. Right shoulder, upper back working for you. Got a little rainstorm going on there. Maybe we'll, I'll be looking, maybe we'll get a uh, rainbow out there. Send those rainbows in to make this practice a little sweeter. Also, another thing I watch for is a lot of times your toes will fly off the ground. <laughs> if that's been happening, gently press the tops of the feet into the ground. That helps to lengthen that low back. And then we're not adding as much of the hamstrings in. We want to really feel our mid and upper back, pressing those toes down. Maybe you want to stop and take a hold. And in the hold, you can relax the buttocks muscles, press the Lower abdomen into the ground or draw it up and in. And come down. Relax completely. Come back to the center. Cross opposite hand to elbow. Feel free to shift your hips and jelly roll your legs. Relax everything down there. Got one more for the back side. And this time we'll go more into a yogic back bend. Equal parts right, left. Keep those toes pressed down. Take your arms into about a 90 degree angle to your sides. And you can rest on your chin or your forehead. I like forehead because it encourages me to keep the neck longer. But see what works for you. Take a breath out and draw the navel center in. Press the tailbone down just a little bit. Take a breath in and lift up. And keep your gaze down at the floor. So the lift up is not the head. Think of lifting from your collarbones. Inhaling up. And if you'd rather exhale and turn onto one cheek, you can do that. Or you can come back to your forehead. See what feels better for your neck. Inhaling through the center. And maybe exhaling onto one cheek. So can you feel both sides of your back engaging? And just as important, releasing. Can you feel upper back or is it just down in that lumbar area? If that's the case, then exhale, tailbone down, draw in from the pubic bone to the navel center, and then inhale long and lift. And exhale down. If this is going okay, the next option to add a little more challenge, a little more spice to it, is as you breathe in, lift your arms up off the ground. Watch that your toes don't lift up though. And exhale down. Even more spicy is inhale, reach arms forward. And exhale. Let it all relax. So you decide your, your level of spiciness for that backside. And going through this these phases of active contraction through the back body, 
And for many of us, this is a place of tension. So just as important, as I said, that complete release as you exhale. And if that's not happening, shake the hips out. Take some extra time down there. Inhale. Lengthen the spine forward. Lift. Exhale down. Take a few more in motion. Or if you want to take a hold, your arms could be here. They could be in the extension like a superwoman. Wow. <laughs> I hope you can hear me because it is dumping out there. A few more breaths. Can't stop now. And come down. So after that one, we're going to come into all fours and just do some mobility here for the spine. Never let the rain stop you, right? Just roll your pelvis around in circles, side bend. So we did the arch and curl in the beginning, right? We did some side bending. <clears throat> so, and then we did back bending just now. So put all those together from the standpoint of the pelvis and move around. So you can press your hips from side to side. You can do the arch and curl, what we sometimes call cat-cow, right? Or any combination of those. And not just for your pelvis, feel your shoulders, let your shoulders get into it too, right? We were working the upper back muscles, maybe the pectoral muscles. So you can let the shoulder blades press towards your spine and draw away from your spine. If your neck wants to get in the groove, Make it feel really juicy. Little spicy, little juicy, little sweet. Okay, so this is the last of the spicy part and this will finish us off for today. And I'm gonna give you several different options, but this is one of the ones I do for myself a lot to keep my core strong. Just like doing the ball, it's very intuitive, but it cranks it up a notch. So we're gonna come on to our forearms. And the first option I'll give you is to stay on your knees, especially if this is new for you. So from your knees, so we're gonna pause for a moment for this hailstorm, and we'll be back with you momentarily. <laughs> so coming back, this is that last one that is definitely spicier. But I'll give it an option on your knees and you're going to lift your belly, take your tailbone down and then see, we don't have to do this to your breath, but see if you can lift one elbow and then the other. Just start by lifting your elbows and notice how your core is supporting you. That's a good little start. And if that feels okay, you might roll your toes under and lift just one elbow at a time. So feel yourself with shifting your weight, kind of like you're in a nice little wave pattern, rocking side to side. Take a few of those. And if you're arching your back, we know that's problematic. So if you're arching your back and you're on your toes, come on down onto your knees, lengthen the low back, draw your navel center in and do it here. So you wanna keep, think of, I always think of slightly keeping your kidneys puffed up. Well, you should be feeling a little bit of heat now. There's that spice, right? Just rocking side to side. And then come down, press just for a moment. We don't wanna to lose too much heat, but we also wanna Take time to appreciate those inner BTUs that we're building. Breath in and breath out. So the next round can look exactly like that first round, either on your forearms, just lifting an elbow up, or you can roll your toes under, but see if you can get your whole arm off the ground. And you might be on your knees. Just notice any difference. So this should take it a little bit more into the upper back. You wanna make sure you're not dropping your belly, draw the navel center up and in. So from the knees or up here. You could even go really slow. So the tendency is for a crash with gravity, right? Part of the work here, the eccentric work is go slow down. You're in control. <laughs> and building some heat. Do one or two more. You can even keep an arm lifted. Feel your muscles through your whole core. And then come down. Relax again. 
feel that sweat if you've got sweat on your brow. Relax the belly. The final spice we're going to put on today, which is my favorite, we'll do it from our knees first, is coming back onto your forearms. So notice we're not using wrists yet. This next one will use your wrists. So if you're uncomfortable, continue to do the one we did last time, which is fantastic. Otherwise, you're going to come onto one hand, then the other hand. So we're basically in a knee plank. And then whichever arm you want to go down first, we'll switch. So coming all the way up like this, sensing those core muscles. This is a good one for arm strength and actually Rick's your wrist too. You can feel your wrist coming into extension. But focus on supporting your arms from your core. If that's super easy, and it's not super easy for me, particularly when I'm trying to speak to you, but then roll your toes under, press through your heels, we don't want the banana back. If you got banana back, please stay on your knees and do it there. Otherwise, keep that tailbone slightly tucked and come on up. And this will definitely build some heat. And a lot of people you'll see go really rapid through this. I actually like to go slower and set myself down with awareness. I find it's actually more work for the core to not let... Gravity, just eat me up. Woo Take your last round. And press back. Child's pose. Belly. Feel that heat. Appreciate that heat that you created. A little sweet, a little spicy. Feel your heartbeat. Breathe. Sends all the muscles in your torso. We'll systematically relax them with each breath. And find a position that's most comfortable for you to do that. So on your back side, your front side, doesn't matter. A lot of times you can shavasana on your front. But finding a place of complete support for the torso, the core muscles, wherever your legs want to be. And we'll start actually at the upper torso. Feel your shoulder blades, your collarbones, feel those bony landmarks. Maybe just gently roll your arms around your shoulders. And whatever's touching the ground, let it melt into the ground. Shoulder blades, the weight of the head, Neck is comfortable. We did some, some neck work too, so relax the neck, the jaw, the whole face, upper part of the body. And then come into the upper back, rib cage. So not just the shoulder blades and the collarbones, but the, the rib cage below the bottoms of the shoulder blades. Feeling your ribs wrap all the way around your torso. You might even just breathe into this area. Expand it and release it through the breath. The expansion on the breath in and that soft, free flowing release of exhale. There's no forced contraction anymore on the exhale. It's just a sense of softness and support. Whatever part of your body's touching the ground, front ribs or back ribs. Then work your way down into the lower back and spine, the lumbar area, the front side around your navel center, the lower abdomen. You take some soft belly breaths. Expand the abdomen as you breathe in. And just let it empty as you breathe out. There's no drawing in or forced contraction. Just the natural recoil that occurs in the abdomen. Low back softening and lengthening with each breath out. And take your awareness into your pelvic floor. 
And give your pelvic floor the same kindness and treatment that you're giving your abdomen, your low back. Breathe in and feel it naturally expand, just like the abdomen. And breathe out, feel it gently recoil. Your spine is fully supported by the earth. And all the muscles in and around the spine are completely relaxed. Take a moment to visualize any organs in your body that you want to say hello to, offer them gratitude. Sense the way that the torso is a beautiful placeholder for all these life-giving organs. And we want to keep the torso, the core strong and protective. The core is protective so that the organs can be relaxed, vibrant. Right now the earth is supporting the spine itself. All the muscles are relaxed and the bones will just hold you. Taking three more rounds of breath. Next breath in, take a full body yawn, reach your arms and your legs like you're just waking up again, stretch your core, wiggle fingers and toes, <sighs> breathe out, sigh, let the weight fall into the ground, gravity supports you, you can roll to one side to come up, take your time, check in, see if you're feeling sweet or spicy at the moment. Maybe hopefully a little bit of both in this practice. Uh, toppled with a lovely hailstorm. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. It's been fun filming here in West Cork, Ireland. We never know what the weather's going to do. So thanks for being here with me. Remember to subscribe, and I appreciate all my patrons who support me, as well as those of you that donate. Peace, joy, love, and light.